his car till I'm running over. Be my God, I'll be your son. Lift me up, why should I fall? I'd rather be six feet beneath and live without you, Jesus. Okay, well, um, it seems that slide uh, lets the cat out of the bag in a manner of speaking. I was hoping that you won't see the slide so you won't know who our next guest is. So that way we can play around with the fact that uh, our guest is somebody who came from a Muslim background and then became a Christian. And not just an everyday Christian that goes to church, one that has become someone that people mention their name and pray to God that God bless me the way you have blessed the son of Salau, who is now a pastor, uh, somebody who was a Muslim, who is now a pastor of one of the fastest growing churches in the whole of Europe. We're not talking of churches in Lagos, in the whole of Europe, fastest growing, and somebody who has a massive amount of influence around the Europe, European continent and also all around the world, because his church is growing all around the world. This is the work of God, and he will attest to that. But um, Alera has sort of like twisted my arm and said she's going to ask the first question. So please, I welcome to our uh, program this morning, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo of Kingsway International Christian Church. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you here, but I'll let Alera ask the first My question. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, Pastor. Good to Thank see you again you. after such a long time. Uh, I think you're coming I, on I'm this actually program. On every, I'm actually here every day. Well, On yes. the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm yes. talking about seeing you in person uh, on Sunrise. Yes. yes. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much. Now, uh, it intrigued me when okay. I read your bio yes. and found that, yeah, that you were actually born Ahmed. Yes. And you converted when you were 22 years old. Yeah, when I was 20. Oh, 20, okay. Yes. Now, tell us how an Ahmed suddenly becomes Matthew and goes from Matthew to being a pastor <laughs> in one of the fastest growing churches. Well, I, I, I believe uh, the sovereignty of God and the hand of God is involved. However, actually, I was born Ahmed, my mom. I uh, was uh, Aishat, my sister Adijat, my brother Mudashir, who is now Pastor Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> he converted as yeah, well. Yeah, once the thing happened to me, created a cascade effect. <laughs> Good. Wow. And uh, my dad was Salau. He died in the Nigerian Civil War in Biafra by the Os uh, Asaba Bridge. Um, I, I was born in Zaria, in the heart of much of uh, what is going on now. I was born in the army depot, uh, actually went to mosque like every other person. You feel like a dang Arewa. Yeah, I, I'm not just feel like I speak Hausa <laughs> better than Yoruba. I used to speak Hausa better than Yoruba. I had to come and learn Yoruba when I came down south. Wow. I didn't know how to speak Yoruba very well. In fact, when I first came, and ended in school in Ibadan, we would say Ibadan. And the teachers would be laughing at us because <laughs> we didn't know how to say it, but no. <laughs> and um, my experience of salvation was very simple, very, it was unusual. I found some tracts in a friend's house, read it, and that was my first encounter with Christianity. That was a yearning, that was a hunger. So I, I, I moved from both going to the mosque to sometimes visiting the church, I still remember saying the Catechism at the Catholic Church near the marketplace in Kaduna, unknown to me that uh, higher hands were leading me. Mm -hmm. So it was a conversion, not even by pressure or somebody mm -hmm. uh, or somebody trying to Convert make me, you. yes, or do an apologetics and compare religions. No, I had a personal encounter with God, reading the tract receiving Jesus Christ into my heart. It was really interesting. At 20, I got born again. 21, I felt called of God. 22, I ended in Bible school. And that was 38 years ago. That wow. was very fast. <laughs> it was all very fast, and I was just hungry to know. But the thing for me was that it wasn't a religion. It was an experience. I had a personal experience. I saw that God was able to now work in my life, deliver me from things, give me a clear understanding of what life is and what my direction in life was. And the next thing was just God blessing my life. And even in Bible school, there was obvious signs to my Canadian uh, lecturers that this man may, 
one day be some kind of a preacher, so they give some more attention. So which school did you go to? I went to a four-square Bible school. I went to LIV Bible College here in Korodu. Many people think I went, uh, although it was much later that I took a degree with Cleveland, Tennessee's uh, Lee University. But my foundation in ministry was four-square Bible school. So how did you end up in the United yeah. Kingdom? Again, I was the first of reverse missionaries. I did not go to England to study. I was sent by that same church as a reverse missionary. They used to send missionaries here. I was sent as a reverse missionary, but then 20 years ago, I stepped out uh, independently to found KRCC. This is very interesting, uh, Pastor Matthew. <laughs> and I'm sure that right now you will not be the favorite person of um, NASFA, the NASFAs of this world <laughs> and all that. And, and um, one issue that people always uh, compare is that it seems that there are more Muslims who become Christians than there are Christians who become Muslims. Why do you think that is so? For me, I believe that Christianity is experiential. Christianity is a, a definite encounter. It isn't just a, a receiving of religion. There is a dimension of Christianity truly that has a face of religion. Um, and uh, it is practiced as a religion. But when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit in a powerful and definite way, it goes past religion and it becomes an experience. For me, because it was an experience and because I, I knew that this wasn't some priest or, or malam trying to enforce and make me imbibe and indoctrinate, it was a personal experience. I believe this may be the reason why there is such mass conversion because people experience the grace of God. And obviously, having been born in the north, I saw it all. I saw, I, I, for some time, sometimes even move with some of the Almajuris, whom Nigeria now hears a lot about. Yes, once in a while, you, I saw them, moved with them. Uh, but that encounter the, the, the reason i ended in the south was also part of the challenges of the north here was the program going on people of the east were being killed right before our eyes and suddenly chief obafemi awulo advised that all military men who are of southern southwest descent should come back home and one day in december 1966 they, with their families, filled a long train and came down south. Unknown to me that I was traveling into something that will have to do with my destiny. But I was born in the north, was raised in the north, saw all those riots, saw the, all the challenges. So, well, you were born there, you saw all that. <laughs> yes. I'd like to know what you think about what is going on up there right now. My, my conviction is that the challenge which we see in the north is not totally the making of Boko Haram. It's a potpourri of many things. It is very difficult for you to understand Boko Haram, the bombing, unless you look at Boko Haram like a hydra, a snake with many heads. Uh, if you want to look at it, firstly, is it a religious problem? Yes, that's one head of the hydra. Is it a, an economic problem? Yes, that's another head of the hydra. Is it a political problem? Yes, that's another head of the Hydra. Is it uh, a human injustice, uh, you versus us situation? Because the dichotomy be between the poor and the rich is more pronounced in the North than it is in the South. I would want to say that is because of uh, our tolerance for education, our pursuit for edu of education, and the fact that our parents made us, in fact, feel that the only way to escape poverty was education. While, on the other hand, 